Number five. If this quadratic is to be written in this form, a completed squared form, what's the value of q? Notice that's a positive. That keeps it simple in this case. Four to choose from. Well, complete the square. Now, I know that seven doesn't work, so I'm working with x squared minus 8x, and I know that seven's not right. So that's what's going to form a square. So what would that be then? If I just take this part here, there should be five parts. If you've got the square of a bracket, you, know you square the first, you square the last, you've got twice the product in the middle here. So well, it takes two to complete the five. Only two bits to complete all five bits, because I know that if that's x squared, that must be x. That would affect the product now, because it's coefficients one. So that means that must be double what this number is. So that number must be four. And then it's square the last, that must be plus 16. You've put a 16 in where there wasn't one before, so take it away. So that means altogether it comes to minus 9. So that means that P was 4 and Q was negative 9. You just have to watch the sign. Notice it says take away P. So if it asked for P, the value would have been 4. If it had been X plus P, P would have been minus 4. It says plus Q, so that means that Q must be negative 9. So Q is negative 9. And negative 9 is answer A. Number six. The point P lies on a circle with center C. What's the equation of its tangent? It doesn't tell you the coordinates of the center or the equation of the circle, but it tells you the gradient of the line that joins C to P. And the only relevance the circle's got in this case is the tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius, so that's a right angle. So if the gradient of the radius is negative two, the gradient that you're looking for, the perpendicular gradient, is going to be a half. That's obvious enough to select it, because those two of them get a half, and then you know you're going to use the formula y minus b, so it should be y minus, and that alone selects it, and there it's done. I'll just go through it all. What would it work out like? So what's the equation of this going to be? y minus b is mx minus a. y minus the y-coordinate of the point, so it'll be y take away negative 3, is the gradient, which is a half, times x minus the x-coordinate, which is 2, so you've got y plus 3 is a half of x minus 2, and it's sufficient to leave it in that form here, because there's the answer there, c. So the answer is c. But you could probably have answered that by inspection. And number 7. Functions defined in the set of real numbers by this formula here. What's the remainder if you were to divide by x minus 1? Well, that's just going to be synthetic division. So we'll set out that synthetic division table, being careful that there's no missing coefficients, and there's not power 3, power 2, power 1, power 0. So the coefficients are 1, negative 1, 1, 3. And then the remainder on dividing by x minus 1 is the same as finding the value of the function at 1. So we'll rattle that through this calculation. So it's add it down, multiply it up, add it down 0, multiply up still 0, add it down 1, multiply up 1, and I get an answer of 4. If you were to put 1 into that, the answer would come to 4. And it does, 1 take away 1, you could have done that way as well. 1 take away 1 is 0, plus 1 plus 3 is 4. Or on dividing by that, you would get this number of times it went in, and that's its remainder. So the remainder is 4. So we'll just check that with the selection, and that gives us D for question 7. Number 8. There's a line that makes an angle of 30 degrees with the positive direction of the x-axis. It does indeed. It's got a positive gradient. What is the gradient of that line? What's its exact value? Well, it doesn't matter where it cuts the x-axis, it's actually quite handy that it cuts there because it saves me having to draw that little triangle to the side because this is one of the ones you should know. You should know the 30 degree triangle. That's one that goes 1, 2, root 3. And then the other thing that's involved here is if you want the gradient of a line and you know its angle, well, the gradient's the same as the tangent of the angle because the gradient is the distance up over the distance along and so it's the tangent opposite over the adjacent. So the gradient's going to be the opposite, which is 1, of the adjacent, which is root 3. And that's all there is to it. And that gives this answer where we've got to A. So the answer for that one is A.